everyone, it's Brett here, Lionheart84. Now, if you're um, a follower of my uh, channel, or have been following for some time rather, you'll know that I try and do, um, in the summer months, I try and do a monthly garden walk around on the first Sunday of each month in an attempt to sort of look at, document how the plants change uh, after a month and what happens in terms of growth, flowers, possible fruit set, any new introductions and how healthy the plants are looking over the summer months. So this one is for the first Sunday in uh, April. It's actually the 7th when I'm filming this because obviously last Sunday was uh, Easter Sunday and I think it was probably the 31st of March if I'm not getting my dates mixed up. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a walk around and see what's starting to happen. Obviously it's a little bit early in the year. The May and June ones tend to be a lot more interesting. But there is plenty of stuff going on. So um, we'll, uh, I thought we'd start with my uh, Pakistan Mulberry or Shartout Mulberry. This is a... Um, this is the dark red fruited one, not the white one. I had a couple of white ones which died. They were eaten by snails and I think they suffered root rot as well. I haven't bothered to get a replacement because I'm quite happy just to have the one because I've got a few other mulberry varieties. And one of the problems with these is they're, they wake up very, very early and they're extremely frost tender. So um, we're now obviously at the end of the first week of April and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we actually get a mild April this year because uh, if we get frosts in April it will completely destroy all these embryo fruits that are coming here and the new, new shoots. The plant will recover and will send out new growth again but all of these would be lost. Now so far as I said it's looking like the next two weeks is going to be mild and as we get towards the end of April there's less likelihood of uh, of frosts which and of course these do toughen up these shoots with time maybe not the flower buds but as these shoots get bigger and it has woken up particularly early this year because we did have a really mild March as these shoots toughen up um, they may become more resistant to frost so so far so good this is my che or chi uh, Chinese mulberry that I potted up just after I did a video on it about a week or so ago that's uh, now starting to bud out nicely you can see the spines they have on them they're not very user friendly um, but that's looking fine in its new pot on the wall behind it is my uh, kiwi berry this one is was originally bought as Isai turned out not to be SI. Now this is another plant that's extremely frost sensitive. If we were to get a frost now, all of these flower buds and new growths would be would turn black and be completely dis destroyed, but it's gonna be absolutely covered in flower buds this year. And I'm hoping that one of my others will flower and I might get cross pollination because this plant does not set fruit on its own. I said it was meant to be an SI when I bought it from Burnkus Nurseries and it, I found out obviously after three or four years and that's the problem with these un, these incorrectly labelled plants here after three or four years by which time it had covered the fence I found out it wasn't SI and therefore wasn't um, capable of uh, setting fruits without pollination. So very frustrating but it's what happens. Here is my um, my crimson sunrise or crimson bonfire sorry peach now as you can see unfortunately I only sprayed it once or twice and I didn't cover it this has now got the uh, peach leaf curl appearing on it now the only thing about peach leaf curl is um, as the weather temperatures get warmer and the weather gets drier um, the first batch of leaves tend to drop off and you end up with the plant then uh, growing clear leaves if it doesn't get damaged. Now it's set quite a lot of fruits on it. Um, however, the damage caused by the peach leaf curl invariably causes the fruits to drop anyway. So um, I'm hoping that it's not gonna to be too severely damaged by the peach leaf curl this year, but we'll see what happens. One of my potted uh, Fijawas, this is the most recent one I got. This one is actually Triumph. Um, I've got a spare one for whatever reason. I think I was buying one for my parents and thought I'd get two. Uh, interestingly, just starting to show signs of new growth here, so it's waking up quite early. 
Behind it in a pot is my uh, Albizia Julie Brissin. Be nice if it got some flowers on it this year. Don't know if it will or not. Seems to get attacked by snails and slugs, but at the moment the new shoots are looking okay. Uh, now this is my medlar. Um, this is a patio one. I think it's Blaze Patio medlar, so it's meant to stay more dwarf. It's now it produced lots of fruits for me last year, and as you can probably see here. It's uh, now got plenty of flower buds coming out on it. I don't think these shoots and flower buds are frost tender, so I don't envisage uh, any problems, even if we get a frost with them uh, with them being damaged and losing the flower. So that looks like it's going to produce plenty of fruits for me again this year, and I did make a nice medlar jelly with it. Um, there's another view of my kiwi berry on the fence you can see why it can't be moved it's a bit of a problem with the uh, size incidentally apologies if we get some sound issues today because we've been having gale force winds here so um, it might impact on the uh, sound in certain parts of the video when the uh, wind suddenly blows got here my in-ground citrus still undecided as whether or not this is the a shoot from the rootstock or a surviving shoot from the uh, I think it was a Myers lemon that I originally had from Burncoost that got severely damaged in well killed back to the base in December 22 when we had minus 7 degrees centigrade for several days however it did send up a shoot from the vicinity of the graft but as yet I've got no way of knowing if this is definitely um, a lemon or the graft. The leaves actually smell very lemony, but of course, if it's on a Volca lemon uh, rootstock, then I'm thinking that would still have lemony smell to the leaves. But just crushing the leaves there, they have got a strong lemon smell. So I'm, I'm hopeful that might actually be a shoot from the grafted soil. Next to it, we've got in a pot here, we've got my mulberry. This is one I repotted recently. This is Carmen. This is a white fruit mulberry. It's got plenty of uh, buds coming on it now, though they probably won't appreciate these high winds. Um, moving along, got the first of my in-ground pineapple guavas. This one is mammoth. Doesn't really, just, just the buds are starting to swell at the tips now, which are just starting to show the new growth. And obviously if you get a very mild April and May, that will push them on a little bit earlier and it would be nice if we got flower buds a little bit earlier than we have previously. Um, in ground we have uh, two of my three mulberries. Uh, the one at the front is Darrow. The one at the behind I can't remember. But this is now in full flower and got lots of new growth on it. The one behind it is ever so slightly later. Uh, my passion fruit in the ground that completely died back a year or two back did send out a sucker Don't know if that's going to survive, but I'm not too worried. It really needs to go um, I just haven't had time to cut it out and remove it from the fence But obviously I could grow something else there perhaps a um, perhaps I could put a male flowered Kiwi in to guarantee Getting pollination on that so I might think about getting a male flowered Kiwi for that space uh, here is another in-ground uh, pineapple guav. This one's a seedling one. I keep talking about moving it, and I still haven't got round to it. I tried it again last year, and the fruits were still dreadful on it. So really, it is a wasted space. I feel I could either put another pineapple guava in there, or possibly um, something like uh, a Chilean guava, because I don't want them to grow as too big at the front. Behind it is my seedling persimmon. If you've seen video I made a month or two back I'm thinking of cutting that back to about four feet and attempting to graft onto the main stem as you know my grafting uh, skills are non-existent so it's uh, there's no guarantee that I'd get any to take but I do have some scions in the fridge of my name varieties so I think there's a good chance I'll have a go at that next to it in ground is my buds coming out so hopefully we have flowers on it obviously not a fruiting plant okay next we're running looking at my in-ground pomegranate this produced one 
tiny fruit for me last year quite a lot of flowers it's getting quite established now doesn't appear it's not a name variety as far as I know it came from Burncoos and it was just listed as uh, Punica Granata but it may be a name variety they simply don't sell it as such because they don't know what it is for sure but hopefully it will produce slightly bigger fruits if we get a very warm summer tucked away behind it and I often forget to mention it is one of my grafted names Paul Paul that one's a sunflower to give you an indication of how slowly they grow that has been in the ground now for five years and it's literally grown about maybe maybe a foot so 30 centimeters in five years so it's painfully slow and it's probably because it's in competition with the pomegranate and the seasonal pinia roots so that's probably part of the problem but at least it's sheltered there and doesn't get burnt but i can see it's got no flower buds on it at all this year so we can have no flowers on it again next to it in ground is my campsis which is purely for uh, decorative purposes moving along i did have a uh, bottle brush here which died but it's not the end of the world because it's given room for this pineapple guava to expand a little bit i've trimmed this back last year to try and get some more branching in the middle which is so far refused to do this one is triumph produces lovely uh, edible fruits for me and i can just see there glad to come out today because that's my tree peony at the back and that's decided to uh that's decided to flower for me so i'm really pleased about that to catch it on video uh this is my in ground i've got a seedling pork pork tree it's now about or just let it grow and say to help with it um, this is a seedling tree that has fruited for me and you can see it's got flower buds coming on it developing quite nicely it's perfect for pollinating my name varieties and I can use them to cross pollinate this and we have attempted to graft onto it this stem here this looks to me like it might have failed now the graft this one was Allegheny it did grow last year but now the graft is looking looking like it's possibly dead this is one of the problems with grafting <laughs> it's no guarantee of success we've got another grafted variety on here um, of which annoyingly the label is now oh no it's down there i thought the label had blown off but it's just slipped right down the branch this one is shenandoah and that i believe it looks to me like the graft is still alive on that that was a double grafted stem and i think those shoots are alive so it looks like we've still got the uh, shenandoah but as i said this plant's got plenty of flower buds on it so we should with a bit of careful cross-pollination get some fruits on it this year and there's another peony flower there as i said this is a, a tree peony i think it's peonia sephriticosa i believe so pleased about that but again the triumph's looking healthy looks like it's just starting to show signs of swelling of the growth buds on the tips of the branches so that should be growing again soon what have we got here that's the seasonal pinia label you can see the winds have been blowing all over the place here Let's throw that back on the ground moving on round one of my figs that one's a uh, Verdino del Nord, it needs weeding. You can see that I've been very slack with my maintenance. And this one is, interestingly, this is a uh, yellow Adriatic. And this is the first fig that I tried to graft and the only one that succeeded. It's actually on a, it's on a brown turkey rootstock. And there's the graft there, which has healed beautifully in the last couple of years. And it's actually got braver on it which may or may not set moving to my first raised bed i've got two uh kapow chilean guavas in here um some damage to the tips of the shoots as you can see uh, but we should be starting to put out new shoots soon so i don't think that's a real problem this is the uh, villarica strawberry that's putting out new growth so i'm happy with the progress on that this is where i had the aluma apiculata which i took out 
and I planted uh, a Gemini pineapple guava in there so that seems to have taken well to its um, transplant doesn't look as if there's any problems here moving on this is my in-ground cherry guava strawberry guava that I've been attempting to over winter was killed back literally to a stump in the December 22 winter I've given it a little bit of protection this year and you can see it's got it has suffered obviously die back and damage to the stems however there's a lot more green leaves on it this year and it's not going to die back any further and I think we're past the worst of the extreme <coughs> excuse me the extreme weather so that should be fine um, it's just going to take a while to recover the downside of them getting damaged like this of course is they struggle to flower um, just for fun I planted a bacon avocado seedling in the ground last year which grew nicely but of course in this winter it's been killed back badly however um, I can see there's new growth buds coming out although the top two feet of the plant are cut off because it had died um, there are growth buds coming out at the bottom and again I think we're past the cold weather so I don't think we're going to have any um, I think that's going to recover and probably grow away again this summer and we'll see how big it gets over the course of the summer probably should grow a good foot or so um, my passiflora cyrulia that i planted in ground and the reason for planting that was firstly it looked nice on this back fence but also if by any chance my maypop which is over there has stayed alive over winter and comes up again in sort of may or june um, obviously if that does come up from underground and flowers and this survives and flowers I can use the cyrulia to cross pollinate the maypop flowers so we'll see what happens there <coughs> excuse me moving on to some of my in grounds plants um, what have we got here this is my first jujube that I've potted up this one is Lee um, no signs of growth yet because they're very late waking up but it should be fine and the one next to it is a lang um now look at this little rascal here this is my grafted shinziki asian pear which has flowered heavily and looks like it'll have some fruit set on it now last year these were all completely ruined by uh, coddling moths and it's too early in the season for the coddling moths at the moment so what I'm thinking of doing is once these have swollen a little bit so I know which ones have set and are growing well I'm going to thin these down to one fruit per, per bunch because there's no good having four or five fruits on here that's not going to work and the weaker ones will fall off I'm going to thin these down to one per per cluster and then put mesh bags on them and see if that keeps the coddling moths out but look at this <laughs> this is crazy these are suckers which I'm going to remove because we don't need loads of suckers coming up from the root I'm quite surprised by those to be honest because they'll be from this root stock here whatever it may be um, behind that I've got my this one is my Nijisiki also has set uh, well had plenty of flowers on it and then we may get fruit set it's quite a young tree and I've cut it back to try and get it to branch out more so I don't know if that's going to be successful um, I'll probably just leave one fruit on this if it sets uh, and let them try and encourage it to um, send out some more growth here I've got two um, kiwi berries on my rear on my rear fence they've not really taken off in this position in fact what they've done is they've grown quite well but the main growth unfortunately is um, is at the back over the neighbours which is a bit frustrating because they're going to get all the benefits of them but I planted a male and a female in the hope I could use them for cross-pollination of my other variety but of course they've not taken off um, and I've got no flowers on them so that's no use at all behind me is the in-grounds Olympic also known as Korean giant that I've planted that's actually flowered for me seems to be settling in quite nicely judging by the new growth obviously happy with being in ground again if it sets any fruit I might let one stay so let's <coughs> move around further <coughs> that's interesting 
I thought it looked like my uh, <laughs> I thought it looked like my plants had uh, taken a bad hit that has most likely been done by a fox that is a that is a main branch off of one of my um, Chilean guava cacao plants and uh, it's obviously been ripped off by an animal and thrown over there which is very frustrating oh the joys of gardening <coughs> Just carry on quickly. This is my Hong Lee, one that I cut back last year because it seemed to have some kind of dieback on it. It's looking healthy now, obviously it didn't flower, but as these shoots develop this year, if it survives next year, it should flower heavily. And my final um, Asian pear, and this one is, this is the Kumoi. Now, as you know, I've, um, I've re-put, repotted them all into these large fabric pots and at the moment they seem to be doing well so I'm pleased about that okay moving on we've got the uh, a Szechuan pepper starting to bud out now these have brutal spines on them it's got lots of uh, new growth on it did even flower last year and produce half a dozen peppers I'm expecting a lot more this year um, one of my surviving grafted uh, pawpaws this one is Pennsylvania golden has got plenty of flower buds on it it's never fruited for me like flowered last year so I'm gonna have another go at cross hand pollinating this year and we'll see what happens um, and next to it is my largest in ground uh, sorry pot grown one and that's my prima Again, it's got flower buds on it and it has fruited for me now for the last three years again I'm hopeful that um, I'll be able to hand pollinate it and we'll get a few prima fruits obviously growing them in pots is not the ideal thing to do for poor poor they're not really suited for pot growing but despite that it's been doing quite well so I'm quite happy to see it and I think I've actually got a scion from this plant in the fridge so I might try grafting that onto my seedling tree and see how it goes this one here is a mulberry this one is i think let's look at it that's agate produces lovely big juicy fruits but it's been a slow grower for me now i'm not going to go through all the obviously i'm not going to go through all my persimmons uh just show a close-up of a couple of them they're now coming out into growth and it's this new growth that will have the flower buds on it uh, again this new growth is incredibly frost tender so if we were to get a late frost there is a, a high risk of um, losing all of this growth although they will normally regrow from that damage and in fact every persimmon I've got is breaking out into bud quite nicely now so they're definitely early this year I said it's just a case of keeping our fingers crossed that we don't get any late frosts same for the figs really uh, again I'm not going to go through all the varieties of figs but um, the figs are shooting out quite nice and early this year there are signs of some brabers although these aren't particularly noted for being braber varieties but maybe I might get, um, I mean, I've got a couple of brown turkeys in pots as well, so they may produce braber fruits for me. But um, again, you can see the signs of braber fruits on plants like this one here. This one actually is, that is my brown turkey. This one next to it looks like it might have a couple of brabers. I think that's um, probably Verdone. No, it's Goot's Door not easy to recognize these figs just from looking at them so this one here is madeleine de deux saison so that can definitely produce braver crops so i'll keep those well fed and watered um, as i said the uh, persimmons are looking pretty good there is signs of die back on some of the trees so obviously once the buds have come out i'll be aware of where the dieback issues are and i can tackle those at the time um, my pineapple guavas these ones i'm not going to repot uh, they are all named varieties i think i've got that first one is coolidge which means the one behind it is probably apollo produced a handful of fruits last year for me um, hopefully i'll get a few more this year more figs at the front various sorts uh, first of my grafted loquats or loquats once again no flowers on them but um, at least the plants looking nice and healthy Moving along, this uh, this pineapple guava is Marion. <coughs> Again, that's looking uh, 
pretty reasonable. None of them have suffered any damage over winter, of course, because they are very, very hardy. Um, this is simply the remains of a grafted persimmon that died. So this is just a root stock. I might graft onto that. Behind it, I've got my flat donut or satin shaped uh, nectarine. Has again got some leaf curl damage on it. They really need to be grown in polytunnels or greenhouses here, but I haven't got that opportunity. But it's still got quite a few flowers on it, so hopefully they're going to set. Down there is my only surviving variegated Chilean guava, one that did survive the freeze. Looks pretty rough in the pot, but perhaps if I remove that uh, seedling pineapple guava from the border, I might plant that out. And that's the flambeau, which is the variegated one. Just going to quickly squeeze around the back here. Chocolate vine, still covered in flowers. Um, there are so many flowers, to be honest, I haven't really bothered with hand pollinating because I think there's a very good chance that it's going to set fruits on its own without me worrying about it. So uh, you can see it's absolutely, <laughs> it's ridiculously covered. And there's that's the, the purple, the standard purple flowered variety. And next to it, you can see I've got the cream flowered variety and standing next to the plant I can smell the perfume which is very pleasant from them but I mean this has now been flowering since February and we're in April and it still looks to me like it's going to have flowers on it for about another month so it'll be interesting to see what sort of fruit set we get this year on it. Um, another close up look of some of my persimmons. I mean, if these all don't get too much die back on them, we should see some uh, decent uh, fruit on them again this year. The chocolatino looks like it's got die back on it, so I'm going to have the pruning uh, secateurs out soon. Here's my little ornamental um, plant here. This is my Calicanthus Aphrodite. Got this purely for the flowers, which is stunning. Repotted it last year, looks great. The two pineapple guavas that I repotted recently, this one's unique, and this one next to it is Nikita. They, um, they'll, they'll, they should really take off this summer with the repotting done on them. The second of my grafted loquats or loquats, this one is, this one is the Mrs. Cookson, which means the other one is Oliver, and they're both grafted on quince rootstocks out of interest. My in-ground kiwi berries, and these ones are definitely a sigh, so these are capable of setting fruits um, on their own. They set uh, parthenocarpically without fertilisation, so they don't have seeds in the fruits, and the fruits tend to be not as big as if they're pollinated, but nevertheless they do produce edible sized fruits. It's covered in flower buds on it this year. Now last year the plants were decimated by snails uh, and I didn't spot it till too late and they literally ate every flower bud on the plant so I didn't get a single fruit but it only had a few flower buds on it and this year's covered so I'm hoping that the snails won't get to them this year, but I will keep an eye out. Here's my black mulberry that I repotted recently in a video. Morris, uh, the only Morris Negra I've got, and the variety is Repseam. I can see the bud starting to swell now, so that should be breaking out soon. Uh, my apricot, early moor park next to it, covered in flowers, doesn't seem to have set a single fruit. As far as I can see, every embryo fruit has dropped off, which is frustrating. Possibly because I repotted it and the disturbance may have upset the root system. But as I said, it flowered very, very heavily, but I can't see a single fruit on it. So that's, um, we're not going to get to taste an apricot this year, but at least the plant's looking nice and healthy and growing away well. Um, another pineapple guava here. This one is, this one's another triumph. I'm not going to repot that this year. I think it'll be okay in that pot. I've still got my three honey berries here, which I was um, hoping to sell. Uh, I only want fifteen pounds for them in these large pots. Uh, one of them even had a flower on it actually recently. 
but I got them on Facebook Marketplace, and I thought they'd probably sell quite easy to someone local because bear in mind what you have to pay for a tiny little plant but surprisingly um no one's taken me up on the uh, offer i feel they're well worth 15 pounds for the size of them as they are now they're obviously their fruiting size i remove them from the grounds to put the chili and guavas in um carrying on around just going to do the little raised bed here nothing of much interest oh here's the japanese raisin tree probably should have mentioned that Another frost tender tree, but um, hopefully we're past the cold stage now. Got my in-ground fig tree, unknown, unknown variety, originally bought as Rouge de Bordeaux, but isn't. Variegated um, rhododendron next to it, which actually doesn't do an awful lot in terms of flowers. It's been a bit disappointing, probably wasted space having it in there. I think it probably can't compete with the fig roots. Um, <coughs> carrying on. Another root stock persimmon where the main plant died, so I might try to graft onto that this spring. Here's a, another pineapple guava, this variety is mammoth, doing nicely in its pot, should give me fruits. My two mulberries that I've repotted, the Moldovan pink that actually doesn't look very healthy, I can't see any signs of new growth on it frustratingly. And the one I did more recently, my Illinois ever bearing, and that does look as if the buds are coming out so I think we'll be okay on that one but I'm a bit worried about the Moldovan pink but hopefully it's just late it seems there's some scars on the trunk and I'm wondering if it's picked up some damage and that's why it's possibly struggling to recover don't know the answer and then finally I don't call it's not my graveyard as such but I've been having a move around this is a corner scusa which I might try and find a space to plant in ground at my parents so it does itself justice that's the this was a molar delsh pomegranate and the whole tree completely died however i don't think it's grafted so these branches at the bottom where it's turned into a bush should be molar delsh and finally my transplanted lumra piculata that i wanted to remove from ground to make room for a smaller plant um, seems to have survived the transplant without any problems looks like it might need watering it's a bit on the dry side possibly still feels damp but i'm just looking at these branches withering a bit but that might drooping a bit but that could be due to the wind but that's looking fine in actual fact so if you look closely at these main stems here there's loads of shoots coming out so i suspect that most of these upper branches here will bush out nicely and this will recover really well probably be okay in that pot for two or three years whether or not i get to move it somewhere else remains to be seen so that was um sorry about the mess around here it is a bit of a messy garden in places goji berry hugely overrated as far as i'm concerned so that's a quick uh, tour of the garden wasn't it quick it was a very lengthy tour of the garden because I wanted to feature some of the plants particularly um, as I said we'll uh, we'll see what happens there'll probably be a big change by the beginning of May but I'm very very pleased with how uh, things are looking at the moment I'm not going to cover the summer house that's for another day Ooh. Right. made me jump there thought it was a beam on my finger Thanks for watching the video. Hope it's uh, some bits have been of interest to you. Please remember to uh, share the video, give me a like, um, welcome to subscribe to my channel, of course, and please click on the bell if you like updates on new videos as they come out. I'll catch up with you all soon. Brett out for now.